Hey, everybody, and welcome aboard. <laughs> that seemed weak. Um, it's all right. Uh, welcome aboard the Tabletop Express, and welcome to our kickoff of our Top 20 series for 2024. And tonight we're kicking off with your list. Hey, I'm Ryan. Yes, it's my list. Not yeah, that is your list. Yeah, and I'm Ian. I'm just the guest passenger tonight. <laughs> I asked you to come here. You did. I did yeah. because I feel like you would give insight on some of these <laughs> awesome games. I got yeah. the golden ticket. Yeah, I, I guess, guess so. I, yeah, yeah, I guess I so. so. By moving four <laughs> minutes away. By moving a couple of minutes away. <laughs> the permanent golden ticket. I really appreciate it, guys. Oh, so thank, thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Let's let's give a little background here for for those of you who are maybe first seeing the Tabletop Express. Uh, very often, what you'll see us doing is every week we have a call-in show. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where we take a little break from the call-in show, and we're going to go for the next four weeks or so with our top twenty videos. Uh, we are going to have myself, Ryan tonight, Anthony, our other conductor, uh, some of our correspondents, uh, as well as some special guests. Mm -hmm who are part of our community doing their videos cool. for their top 20. So six or seven videos in the series this year. Very exciting. And what we do uh, is, I think, special, which is we highlight your stuff yeah. tonight. And we're focused on you. We're not jumping around for, for different lists. So uh, that's one way that we do our lists. I'm um, going to say hi, by the way, to uh, Mr. Rao Gaming, who is here. You're going to see him on this list at some point i will tell you that much and we got tyler in the house what up as hey, well tyler. uh before we get started on your list yes two very important things too so as noted uh call board's gonna return call board's gonna return on estimated date of may 15th of 2024 that call board is going to be a very special call and show because we have a challenge to all of you um, first and foremost, if you're not part of our Discord, we're going to encourage you to join our Discord, join the community. Uh, it's a great group. But that Discord is where I'm going to be dropping the link to a very easy to use form where you're going to be able to share your top 20 videos, uh, mm. top 20 videos, top 20 <laughs> games. Uh, you want to share your top 20 videos, you could do that. You could. Uh, but your top 20 games of all time at, at this moment. And what we're going to do is compile that all, and our May 15th episode is going to feature our callers' top 20. Yeah. And we're incredibly excited. It's about the this. caller's so, top 20. Yep. So uh, that's going to be all about all of you. And so we're really excited about that. Um, but because of that, again, the thing I would note is call aboard. We're going to take a, a little bit of a break from that so we can rock through these videos. Yep. Um, and with that. So no more calling in. Only calling out on our part, right? <laughs> See what I did there? See what I did? Yeah, I the pun. See what I, I did? No, I've been on. waiting for this. It's going to be this. a pun game challenge tonight, isn't it? Oh, I think man. As we move through. Oh, yeah. For sure. Right, let's see what we can do. Um, but if you want to pull up the board just so people can see what the format's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So we got our top 20 right here. <clears throat> look at that. Look, number 20 over there. Yeah, go down. Um, and I am going to, we're all going to start with one honorable mention game yes that did not make the list so if you want to i'm going to bring us back to the other i story. brought it with me and everyone's gonna bring theirs at one point but i got shikoku 1889 over here uh shikoku 1889 is an 18xx game which is a train stock game and out of all of the 18xx games which tend to be pretty long and pretty mathy this one's my favorite um small board really tight decisions really cutthroat actions certain points this might excite you there, there are times i'm excited already there are times <laughs> where there could be no diesel trains which is huge anyways yeah that's my uh that's my honorable mention it's my favorite eight and xx game which means there are no more eight and xx games this entire list wow oh spoiler spoiler, that's oh, spoiler I, reveal. I mean that's, that's a surprise that's just what it is right. that's so. just what it is all right pull it up Pull it up. All right, bring up back. And I have my list. list handy in front of me. All right, so my number twenty. If you want to go to the top left. Hey Rachel. Hey the, Rachel. The mouse. Where did it go? Uh oh my goodness gracious! You got a. Where did you put my mouse? I don't okay. know. It disappeared. Oh my goodness! Wait, is it on the other side now? It ran off. Oh. At, the, at the thought of no diesel trains. I see what's going on. So technically, there's another monitor. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, give me one second. One second. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to use the other side. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right. Technical yeah. difficulties because technically there's a third monitor. All right. All right. Number 20. Pop it up. Cockroach Poker. Okay. So Cockroach Poker, right, uh, designed by Jacques Zemet from 2004. Uh, this game is the best game involving bullying. There is uh, – <laughs> you can play with up to six players, and there's only one loser in Cockroach Poker. Usually near you. It's usually usually near you. I, don't know. I feel like I came pretty close last time we played. <laughs> but you did it, though. I didn't lose. You did. I don't think you so. Did. I think I did. Anyway, I, I don't think I logged it. Um, no, okay. But <laughs> Cockroach Poker is a hilarious game. Everyone should try it. It's great family week kind of game too, um, where you the first person to have four of a kind directly in front of them or run out of cards in their hand is the loser. And what you're going to be doing, it's a bluffing game where you're going to be calling out a card, passing out over to another player and say, Ian, this is a, a cockroach. And Ian now has the opportunity to say, yes, it is a cockroach. No, it is not a cockroach and flip it over or decide to take a look at it and pass it along, pass the buck along. And I'd be like, yep, it's a cockroach. And change it up. You can even change <laughs> it up. It's like, no, it's a stink bug. Yeah, it, it's a great filler game, and if you're not good at lying, yeah, it can be challenging at times, but I think you can... I don't think you have to be the best liar to win this game. Well, here's my favorite part about this game. This game... So, if you don't want to be in the spotlight, this game is not for you, because very much the person who is getting bullied, they are going to be in the spotlight. Like, that's it. They are going to be in the spotlight, and oh my gosh, all the pressure's on me, because everyone's bullying this person into losing so yeah i i love it yeah i, th I think to me um a firstly it's another devere sign game and devere has smashed it out of the park the last well uh, la later editions was devere in uh yeah the edition yeah. you got yeah yeah but um devere has smashed it out of the park with these kind of games that they've signed over the last, sort of oh, the last sure. two years yeah um so this fits in really well with their portfolio the artwork is amazing and i think to me the game is geared at kind of the adult level, but the artwork allows a kid or a family to really get into it. Yeah. Um, and kind of elevates the fun factor in it. So I really think the game hits multiple different levels. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think our, who was it? Yeah. Mitchell said such a great filler game. Yeah, completely. It's something that takes a two minute explanation, if that, yep. 15 minute filler, and a fantastic breaker between more heavier games or a great icebreaker to start, and a great finisher late at night. Yeah, so. this is one that has been very popular at PAX Unplugged. We've played this quite a yep. few times at PAX Unplugged, and you, it just it's great for every group. So, yeah. and I always say with this one, the first time you play it, you, you're you're sort of figuring out, and then about halfway through, you you get you're like, okay, I get it, and then something clicks. Yeah. So. What I, what I think is really cool about it, which sometimes we don't get with bluffing games, is this works well where you know your audience. Yeah. But also works well if you don't know your audience. Yeah, it, it's very oh, versatile. That's what's great about it. Yeah. By the way, Rachel pointing out that here's the beginning of my count for, uh, for Shame Con, yeah. which is becoming a, a theme that we're hearing about uh, Shame Con. So we need we're going to start doing oh, Rachel, you need need to relabel it, not Shame Con. You need to have it as opportunity. No, we're no, we're, shame con. no, shame we're, we're, that's we're what we're running with. We're we're running. We're going to start a new convention called think, Shame Con. I think we're yes. in real trouble. Yeah. And yeah, Squirrel mentioning that when we played, I was always targeted. Don't worry. It happens. Uh, oh, man. We're going to find that mouse. So my number 19, right, is a deck builder. It's a deck builder. Oh, it's okay. not the highest rated deck builder on my list, but you still find it. I, it, okay. I got over here before, but now it's gone. You'll get it. Oh, now it's over there. There, there. Is, there, it is, there There's the mouse. Back. Okay. There you there are. Go. I... You know, I know exactly where I need to run the mouse now. All right. All right. My number 19, pull it up. There we it's go. It's Shards oh. of Infinity. Um, this was on my list last year uh, at number 13. It's dropped a couple places. Um, this is a two – This, I mean, you play up to four, but this is really a two-player, battler, deck builder kind of game. And of all of those kinds of games, this one's my favorite one, period, um, the two-player battling card games. Uh, Shards of Infinity is a fantastic game where it is a standard deck builder, except 
certain cards in your deck in your hand will level up as you gain experience all the way to the point where one card when played will absolutely obliterate the opponent um it's fantastic if you haven't played it yet you definitely should another thing i love about this game too is you have decisions when you want to purchase a card if you want to add the card to your discard pile or some cards actually you play it immediately right then and there and immediately trash it after playing it so that game is you know it, it, it's it works so well um especially with how many cards there are the synergy on them is, is fantastic okay have you played this one Chris? i have not so for those people who know me that's quite unusual for ryan to come up with a game that i have not played oh. um so yeah, so I'm excited now to play this. It's gonna happen, and you, and you hit kind of what my question was, which is going to be what makes this deck builder different. But I think you were saying that it's the idea that you can power up or yeah, augment your cards, which is quite an interesting technique. Um, how long does this take? What kind of play time? Um, very quick. We're talking Not like long. twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Right. Have you played Star Realms, Hero yes. Realms? Okay, this yeah. blows okay. A, the oh, wow. okay. blows it all out of the water. Well, what's interesting to me is anytime I've brought a game to the table, because for example, I really like Radlands, and then I and Every time I bought a two-player battler to, yeah. to the table, you've always mentioned you really need to play shards. Yeah. And then eventually I you did shards and I enjoyed shards. It was a great, very enjoyable. And I did like that upgrade mechanic because it was a very as a deck builder, plays mm -hmm. like a deck builder, it's solid. Uh and not doesn't definitely do anything unique from the deck building in, in the basic play. Yeah. But that ability to upgrade and making that decision when you want to. Do the upgrade was what i really like i mean in a way it's a really hard <clears throat> kind of um mechanical genre to get into because there's not much you can do there's in deck that's innovative. To be innovative yeah especially now when you think about how many deck builders are out there absolutely so to have that kind of powering up mechanic i think maybe will as you said make this stand apart from others and that was shards of infinity so if you haven't played it yet Good choice go right, play. we need to get that to the table number 18 i forget what it is go pull it up it's through the ages a new story of civilization have you played Classic, this one yeah Classic. Okay. It's all right. Ten years old now. Yeah. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Well, and that's and that's yeah. actually like the reprint yeah. one. Yeah. It's yeah. ten years old, right? Um, okay. So I mentioned this before when it was my number seventeen last year, and I mentioned it again the year prior. Yes. I have still yet to play this game in person because the digital implementation <laughs> is fantastic, and I really would love to. I have it. I have it right, right, right there. Has somewhere. this moved down your list? Has this dropped? Uh, it's, no, it's still number 17. It's been 17. No, so it's stayed. It's, it's stayed, pretty stagnant. It's pretty steady. Yeah. At 17. So Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization, designed by Flada Cabattle, um, is a board game from CGE where you are running your civilization in a tableau, a card tableau system. Um, it's it, it works incredibly, incredibly well when you have everything thrown in there. The expansion that came out, which is called New Wonders and Leaders because it adds new wonders and leaders, uh, is fantastic. And it, it's great kind of mix of all these different leaders you can get. Sure, it, it kind of feels a little bit more like Civilization, the video game, where you could have, like, Napoleon run your army, okay. you know, up until, like, you know, so age how three. how does this compare to, like, uh, Sid Meier's Civilization board games? I haven't played it. Okay, I haven't All played right. it, but I played okay. Nations. Okay, All right. and, so Nation, and Nations. Nations. So Nations uh, took a lot from Through the Ages okay. and fine tuned it a bit. Okay, but the thing is, I kind of like the grit. I okay. kind of like yeah. all the complexity within it. And again, the app the app itself is amazing. I still need to play this in person, but I absolutely adore this game enough to keep keep it in my top 20 because i will play it one day here's a question yeah it's one of those games you play on app or bgas because it's too much to take uh to take care of in person yeah. i can't answer that but i'm assuming yes because again i still haven't played yeah. it in person <laughs> by the way we are going to say hello to some of our regulars and someone who i believe will be giving us but you played it in person i've played it in person but i've never played it on the app how long did it take you uh in person yeah you're on about two Two hours? Oh, yeah. That's, That's not bad. bad. Yeah. That's That's not bad. bad. Me, me and yeah. you, we could play it. I think we could play it. Yeah. So I'm wondering with you saying you played it on the app. Yeah. I find when I play like a heavier game on the app, something like um, Yokohama or Russian Railroads, sure. that you lose something because of the way, even if you've got a really big monitor and a big screen, 
You oh. lose something about how you look around the board, about where your eye goes to and everything. So I I really like the fact during COVID we could get on BGA and we could yeah. play some great games and we could play with people that we would only ever meet at conferences as well. So I think, you know, app-based gaming is great. Yeah. But I'm wondering whether when you play this on the tabletop and then if you go back to the app, whether you then feel you are losing something about how you visualize the board and about how you're over the board. Well, the thing is how this game handles it in particular for the digital app, they they actually extract a lot of the gameplay and change the user interface to really feel more... Well, you see the board game mechanics uh -huh. working, but how it's handled on the UI is very, uh, you know, video gaming. Like yeah. they did okay. a great job right, of so kind of clean, integrating. It's, it's, it's like a lot. Just, they've yeah. adapted it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But but the great thing is, I still have never read the entire rule book, and I could guarantee you, I'm going to be playing this game in person with really very little hurdle, very little hurdle. So you're not going to have to. I'm guaranteed to teach. Am I going to win on this? Uh, <laughs> no, he's you, like, no, you still might. You might. Like, nah, you might. I'm a I'm a nine year app veteran. You you might you might. Oh, man. But that's through the ages of a new story of civilization, which maybe this is the year for us, for all three of us. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's do it. Let's make that happen. Maybe it. it could be a streamable session. I don't know. It could be a, a long stream, stream. A long yeah. streamable <laughs> session. So my next one, squirrels in the chat. He's gonna like this one because at one point it was his favorite game of all time, and that is Rococo, the deluxe edition. I Good have. Choice. Good choice. Good choice, right? Yeah. Good, Good choice. choice. Previously, yeah. your number twenty. So it's moved up just a bit it's moved up a smidge okay. it's moved up a smidge because i had some more fond memories of rococo when i was making this list in rococo oh. uh it is still his so number one on. favorite of all time so in rococo you are competing um dress and suit makers you know tailors i guess right you know um and this is a game um it was pointed out to me last year by uh, by Chad from Punchboard Paradise that this is like the quintessential medium weight game according to heavy cardboard. Like this is the one like if in terms of, like what is the middle of the road medium? This is middle of the road medium. And in this game, you're going to be creating dresses uh, and either selling them for money or putting them out for victory points. And you need victory points. You also need money. You need resources. You need specific silks. And Chris, if you take my blue silks from me, I am going <laughs> to knock you over the face. And you just did. So um, fantastic game. Tons of cutthroat decisions. It turns to an area majority game later on because putting specific dresses out into specific ballrooms are going to score you more points. And then, of course, you want them to go to the top because what's the best thing about the top? They talk to King Louis. And then they end up going up seeing the fireworks at the end with like their little binoculars and stuff. Um, I I adore this game. It's a, it's a deck builder, sort of. It is a deck builder, but it will in the game you have different cards you can play from your hand, but you must play all of your hand before you draw your deck, and yep. you never shuffle your deck. You just get to see all the cards out as you go along, and there's tons of shifting strategies based on what's going on, what other people are doing. Uh, Rococo is fantastic. Tyler said it's, he's played it and he was once, but really surprised me. He enjoyed it. And then we got uh, Chewy Huey in the chat. Yes, yes to Rococo. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a solid game. It's, yeah. This is the second edition reprint, Felix version. We should we should yeah. pair it with Battle yeah. of Versailles. Yeah, yeah. I was, about, I was about to say, I'm, I'm a big fan of some of you may know on the channel of Theme. Yeah. And I think Rococo really nails Theme and Mechanic. For sure. Um, Ian O'Toole. On the um on the reprint on the deluxe edition did a phenomenal job yeah in terms of the artwork the iconography his his um, work is uh, always outstanding yeah. it's it you put his name on it and I'm yeah. gonna look at it and what I would say is don't look at the box and think heavyweight I think heavy oh it's not right it's but not I, but yeah. I, I think the fear sometimes is because it matches the Eagle Griffin style for Talisada yeah. heavyweight box size heavyweight box art yeah. Because all those games are heavyweight yeah. category, but this is nowhere near that kind of weighting. So don't be put off by looking at the box and the fact that Eno Tool did the artwork and it looks very similar to a lot of the heavier games out there. I think this is a lot more accessible. Yeah. As I, a gateway into those kind of more heavier experiences. I, I would agree because absolutely that box size is very intimidating yeah. when the original game came with the uh, with the different art came out in, in the yeah, square box. Smaller, yeah. Yeah, and that's a, a very standard middle of the road kind of euro. But I also think it was a very clever ploy, yeah, from a publisher mm -hmm. to use a similar box size 
and yeah. Oh yeah, Michael Menzel. Thank who you is one of the leading artists around? You know, tool yeah. with his graphic design. Yeah. Because instantly, people who hadn't played Rococo bought it. Yeah. Because they perceived a similar quality as Lacerda and the O'Toole combinations. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it was a very clever ploy to kind of choose that that size box. Brian's no, also, it's by the game. way, inquiring if anyone's played. It looks like uh, Ryan has, but uh, I played Soul Rococo. Looks like Ooh. it's an option on BGG, otherwise known as Solo Coco. <laughs> Solo Coco? That's what it should be called. It's not called that, though. But it should be called Solo Coco. Hashtag Solo Coco. Um, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I should. I really should. Put it on your list. Put it on the list. Put it on the list. <laughs> but that was Rococo. Deluxe edition. But the regular Good edition choice. is fine, too. Now, number 16... The last two years, I've included a game called Star Trek Frontiers, which is a reskin, essentially, of my number 16, which is Mage Knight, oh, yeah. new to the yeah. list. Um, I once heard Mage Knight referred to by uh, by Rob of Horsehead Bookends yep. saying, I hate this game. Um, and that's fair, because this game is not for everyone. This is a deck builder, again, a deck builder, exploration game. It doesn't look like a deck builder, because there's a whole board out there, but... It's a solo best game where you're spending most of your time looking at five cards and saying, what should I do? Because there's tons of things you can do, but you're going to be moving and doing something or doing something and moving. And what should you do is very important. And that's why I love this game solo, because I can take that time and not worry about pissing off my, my, my fellow <laughs> gameplay game players um in this game you're exploring trying to achieve different things with these cards and it is absolutely amazing i just got to uh, you know i got recently the ultimate edition which has all the expansions in it and a new expansion is going to be coming out which is bonkers yeah, yeah. Well, you're, uh but you're playing this is pretty much strictly solo for you yeah right you're not you, generally speaking you know oh yeah you wouldn't recommend it with well personally i would play with two players if it's someone who hasn't played to introduce them to the system that is okay. the only time i will play two players because even then the rule book is actually very dense but straightforward yeah. like it walks you through the game um and there's a i think it's called first conquest is that scenario mm -hmm. and i'm fine with doing that with in two player but playing it solo how it's handled amazing amazing solo experience yeah. you know board games half of the fun is just playing with toys and look at those look at those that's it's, it's whiskits it's whiskits you know, so they, they put out i've just got into another whiskits game recently and the game the miniatures are really cool they're all painted yeah. they're a nice size that the chunky but detailed but i think to me what's fascinating about mage knight is when it came out it was billed as a multiplayer experience it's mm -hmm. a typical multiplayer game yeah, it is now known within the industry and the game playing side of the industry, let alone publishing or anything, as a solo game. Yeah. People buy Mage Knight to play on their own. Yeah. I bought this during COVID because we lost our gaming group. Did you play it then? Yeah. That's what? when I got into Mage Knight. What'd you think? Fantastic. Right? It's a great experience. Yeah. Now you need to set aside a fair chunk of time. Yes. Because um, it is very, if you are prone to analysis paralysis. Yeah. Uh, it really leads it, into But this. it encourages it. But uh, I know. It encourages it. Is this one that could sit on the table and then yeah. you take a moment, walk away, come back and make yeah. a move? Yeah. Got it. If you had a pretty big table. Yeah. And you, you didn't have cats. Oh. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great game. And it actually is. I, I like calling it a solo experience. Yeah. Because it is an experience, an enjoyable experience to play. Yeah. It's not, not a game. It's an experience. Yeah. If you want like a yeah. video game kind yeah. of feeling. Yeah. That's what it is toys, on the tabletop. It, yeah. it, that's what it is yeah. yeah so mage knight my number 16 my number 15 is a lot smaller and two player only and that's patchwork oh so new choice. to the list new to the solid list choice um this is designed by uve rosenberg came out 2014 um i adore this game oh is that mini ryan that that mini is that is that is that is that's my son game. maddie he'll awesome. be coming back later for some other games too um patrick is fantastic it's a game where you're constantly trying to hope for the right piece before your opponent takes that piece. You're constantly trying to jockey for, do I have enough buttons? What, what, because but you use buttons to purchase pieces, but then you also use time for, to purchase pieces. The further ahead you move, 
the more opportunities to give to your opponent because whoever is in behind is going to keep going until yep. they are in front. I love that mechanic. Oh, I love, I love it. it. Yeah. Uh, this game is brilliant. If you want a two-player experience that really gets you pushing and pulling, like when people ask me, you know, uh, someone's actually recently asked me, I want to play a game, uh, some more board games. I'm looking for two-player games, probably with my wife. Patchwork is my number one suggestion always. So, um, Rachel's mentioning Valentine's edition. That we just had pictures. We just had yeah. the pictures for it from yeah. uh, from Anthony. Right, and I would point out. I think that's one of the neat things about this game is there are a bunch of editions of it. Yeah, uh, the Halloween edition actually redid a few things from a balance perspective. Yeah. So the hall, and then anything that followed that, obviously, okay. I would imagine kept that balance. There's so many different versions of this. It really doesn't matter which one you own. You're going to have a great time. But you could have them for all these thematic occasions if, if you like and have them on the shelf and at the holidays. I love having the, the Christmas one. I, I think it's it, it looks so great with the little present style. The Christmas one, too, yeah. comes with a Christmas yeah. cookie cutter. Yes. <laughs> I mean, to me, this is a great game to get non-gamers into the hall. Oh, yeah. Because again, it's a it's a five minute explation. It's a twenty minute play, and it's an appealing I mean, thing. I mean, yeah, and it's not intimidating. You know, we're building a quilt. Yeah, yeah. That's what's nice. How hard can this board yeah. game be? We're building, but a it quilt. can be cutthroat. Brian's right though. That app is really great too. Yeah, the app is really great, and the AI is brutal. Oh, it's like, mean, brutally hard. So I have not played. Yeah, I've only ever it's I've only ever played old school. Two yeah. of oh, at the table, but I'm that gonna app. Try, is, I'm going to try that now, Brian. So the app is mean. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. But yeah, my number 18, no, sorry, my number uh, 15, 15, 15, yeah. 15 patchwork. Yep. Uh, my number 14, I hear some chatter about it in the oh. chat, and that's Spirit Island. There it is. Good choice. Yeah. I knew this Good was going to be honest. Designed yeah. by Eric, our Eric Royce. Uh, came out in 2017. I remember buying this at PAX Unplugged without knowing anything except it's Spirit Island, and it's the anti-colonialism game because yeah. in this game you are different spirits on this island protecting the island from these invading coloners that are going to be uh adding towns and cities to your island causing blight and killing the natives on the island and it's up to you and your other cohorts to be scaring them off the island mm. so it's the anti katan that's how it was pitched to me um i think, I think this is a fantastic game. oh yeah it's fan it's it's yeah. it's it fantastic it's under 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 underselling it because this game right here we're talking crazy asymmetric powers just in the base game alone you have different spirits that control different factors you have one that controls the rivers and they have fun names like lightning uh, lightning swift strike is one of the is one of the yeah. gods, right? Uh, Ocean's hungry grasp, which yes. lures yeah. colonists out into the ocean to it murder them. them. It's so yeah. oh man, it's Chewy, so great. By the way, owns everything. Same, Dude, same. And then I'm with you, Chewy. I'm the same. Same. And yeah. Tyler got it on a windbreak Black Friday. A so steal, like, yeah. forty dollars. Yeah. A steal. And we're talking again. How much? is in the base box alone without everything, just the base box. If you get the base box, you're going to have, I think, six spirits, maybe even eight spirits, six to eight spirits. I think it's six. But anyways, you have six to eight spirits. Um, you're also going to have different difficulty levels for these colonies because it's designed to be a winnable experience for your first co-op, but you add on how complex and how heavy you want this game to be and how difficult you want it to be because they'll have different rules. They'll have different factions, like the Spanish will be in the Dutch and the English and the Russians. Uh, the English are terrible in it as well. I, are they? I, I don't like the epitome <laughs> of colonialization. Well, there yeah, you go. They're awful. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, it, yeah. This game is 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 amazing. So to uh, me, the clever thing about the design was not the layering of difficulty when you think about adding in like the Swedes or the or the English. Yeah. And the scenario. To me, what I really liked about the, the layering of the difficulty is within the asymmetry of the spirit powers. Oh, yeah. So we can play as three experienced gamers with a with a gamer who's never played this game and hasn't played many games and give them a very easy-to-run spirit. Yep. Yep. Yet we can still get that challenge by playing a really hard-to-run and difficult spirit. Yeah. That, I think, was an incredible piece of design work for a game. Yeah. Because normally we ramp up difficulty and everybody 
faces that difficulty ramp. Yeah. But that's where I think the uh, the designers, the, the team of, of designers... Well, that's, that really our, hit our Eric Royce shines with that because yeah, he's also really done that for um, for Science, the dexterity yes. game, where there's little mini games you can play if you're not a fan of dexterity. And there's games where you can play where if you are love stacking and love doing sorts of different stuff. But Spirit Island on the table with the neoprene mat, oh, yeah. with a game box organizer, yeah. is a joy to get out of the box. Yeah, Quick setup. Yeah wonderful hour and a half two hour experience yeah and with with the add-ons a quick turndown the oh, only thing nice. i would not recommend it is at a high player count because the slowdown time is there the more people you add i think three two to three tops is where i would go and if i'm doing solo which i do like it solo i would control two spirits if you're comfortable with so it. my go-to is three yeah i think it, i think at three player and i think four it's okay but if you have you have to have four experience players. exactly I would yeah. do experienced but, players with four. Three in any mix, I think, works wonderfully well. Yeah. I haven't but two, tried it. But two experience, one in experience with that easier spirit, totally totally doable in a reasonable time. What's solid, too, is not only difficulty levels for the spirits, but you're, we're talking synergies because there's spirits that focus on defense. There's some that focus on giving fear out. Yep. There are some that on, focus on causing blight. There's, there's, there's a lot of different things going on. Um... Yeah, and, and right, uh, oh, Riley remember. Stock of the Board Game Community Show. It's his number one yeah. game of all time, and rightly so. I, I mean, that's only your number 14 now. I'm like, what is the rest of yours going to be? I know, right? It's a great game, yeah. and I love hyping up my top Well, 20. that's what I mean. I'm really excited now to see what the next thing right. is going to be. Well, be fair to be disappointed. Let's no, find okay. out. Uh, no, uh, no, my, no, number, no. my number 13 is Dominion. Uh, Dominion, the granddaddy of them all deck builders. Told you to be disappointed. Like, Are yeah, you a little disappointed? I, I, I have to make an admission because <laughs> guess what? I have never played the Granddaddy original really? deck game ever. So I remember when this game came out and how amazing it was when it came out. Like deck building wasn't a thing because Dominion is the deck builder. Um, and they're still pumping out expansions. They're still changing all sorts of things to it, which is completely wild. And what I love about Dominion, and I brought it up before, and I'm going to bring it up again, is the structure in Dominion. A lot of deck builders lose structure. In Dominion, you play one action card, you have one purchase, and then you discard your hand and drop to five. And the key about Dominion is finding where it breaks and focus on that. Obviously, that's how I like to play. It's also not the optimal way to play because certain certain <laughs> certain action cards that come out, there's no point on doing it. Just focus on big money. But here's the thing. I just like finding those combos and playing with them and seeing where the system goes. I don't really play it to win. I play it, I mean, I always play to win, but I don't harp on hardcore strategies. I'm just more like, okay. I want to see how this plays out and see how it goes. This is my question. Yeah, if someone's getting into this game now, yeah, because there's so much. There's are they getting the base game plus something else? Yeah, because I remember my first experience with it was it was the base game, and I was like, okay, this is fine. But at that point, I wasn't introduced to it when I, I had was interested after playing many other deck builders. Yeah, so I'm assuming if you've been playing deck builders, you're going to want to invest in the base game and then some, uh, um, or is the base game enough? I guess so that's the question. Here's the thing, right? You asked me a couple years ago, I would say no. Now, I would suggest just the base game because Dominion 2nd Edition is a thing. Okay. So they okay. changed a bunch of things. They made they added some new cards to give it a bit more a bit more flavor. It's still very vanilla, but yeah, a that little was bit my more experience. Flavor. So would you say get 2nd Edition or would you say seek out the original? I would say get second edition. Okay. There's no All reason right. to seek out the original because okay. a lot of the ones from original are in second edition. And okay. the cards that are moved from first edition, okay. for the most part, are okay. Granted, there's some in the later expansion, second editions, that I do not agree with. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, I heard a lot of great things about the Plunder expansion, which I still haven't played yet, but is a recent one. So I would go for second edition and then go for any of the later, most recent editions uh to play out i know prosperity was always one that was recommended same with seaside uh both i believe have second editions i know prosperity does i'm pretty sure seaside must um and then plunder is one that has stuff there's allies the one i haven't played yet but i, but I own is nocturne nocturnal or whatever it's okay. like so they have like werewolves and stuff okay. 
which in concept is cool, but you know, I mean, it's holding its own. What, fifteen years? Oh yeah, and so years it's, after after coming out, it's still going strong. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my number twelve, though, we'll keep it on the deck building. Stuff. I think this is the highest rated deck builder on my list. And it's one that you and I have been playing a lot. You know okay. what it is. Oh, it's Undaunted yeah. Stalingrad. So Undaunted Stalingrad, uh, designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin from 2022 Osprey Games, is... Oh, if you want to click on the picture so you can see some stuff. I got Dude. some pictures. There we go. So it is a deck builder World War II style game where you are fighting... You know, you're, you're just fighting your opponent. and in this game, it's my favorite of the Undaunted series because it is a full-on true campaign where cards will essentially power up or downgrade. Mm -hmm. And also, parts of the map will upgrade or downgrade as well, too, um, as the game goes on. Um, it's a game that we still haven't even finished our campaign we haven't... yet. We're, we're, we're pretty close, though. We're pretty far into it, and yeah. the thing I find interesting is even when you're not winning the war, you can feel really good about how you about a battle you just lost. Spoken like a true loser. I no, but you can <laughs> because there was. I know how much damage. For example, one battle I had, I had done major damage to his deck. Yeah, and I had taken very little, so I can know going into the next battle. You know, okay. I knocked out three of these cards and now they're downgraded. Yeah. And those downgrades really hit you. Yeah. Cause, cause the, especially if it's, when you look at the ones that are powered up, you know, the ones that you've upgraded, oh man, they can do some pretty cool things. Plus the board is constantly evolving because I made the choice to do something. Now this building is destroyed. You don't have cover anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next scenario, you might be stuck in that building. So it's very interesting how it kind of all plays out. Uh, and it's fascinating because you introduced me to Undaunted through Stalingrad. I did. Which I would not recommend for most people. I think the difference was I had this war chest experience. Uh, I had another some, game by the same uh, by, designer. Yeah. Chest. Yeah. yeah. yeah and and chest. a lot of the same language. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel like this one, th there's a lot to learn, a lot of things to take in. But man, they, they, they hit it out of the park with this one. So I haven't played this one. I've yeah. played uh, North Africa. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've played Battle of Britain. Yeah. So I want to play this, but yeah. then I want to go through the campaign. Um, but I, I, your endorsement was great. I'm losing the battle. I'm losing the war. But I still think I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling like, like I'm, I'm You achieving. still feel good. That's in a the, really in good the, endorsement. It's very fail yeah. forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. which really, I really like in campaign endorsement. games. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good endorsement. You, you could feel good about yourself even after... Man, I didn't quite pull it out the win. Oh, but look at all those people he's losing. Yeah, and it and it happened. Like I, I, I have probably a worse deck than you do at this point. Even though I technically won more, I still believe I have a worse deck than. Oh you. yeah, I believe that, and that's going to carry on because it's a whole war. It's not just yeah. a battle. But, but like, you know. what I what I like about um, the series and you're building your deck, but then when you play your cards out, you've still got other tactical choices about where where things move. Yeah, and how you attack with that deck, right? So we're not we're not just a straight deck builder that I'm getting this card and this card does one thing. Correct. There's a whole and, board, and then using the card to do different stuff. On yeah, the board, and that's what I think is really nice about this. Yeah. So to me, I'm not a ma I never used to be a big deck builder fan. Yeah, and to me, I think this series is great because I don't call this a pure deck builder. It's not because of the other stuff that you can yes. do yeah. in addition to augmenting your deck, which gives you more options. Yeah, not to also yeah. also highlight too. The initiative system in Undaunted Stalingrad is fantastic, where you get to choose if you're going to be ditch because at the beginning of your turn you have to ditch one of your cards, and the higher value on that card on the top left is going to go first, and that's crucial yeah. because yeah. you may not want to ditch a specific card. Yeah. I feel like it's a lot more crucial in Battle for in Battle for Britain for sure, um, but Undaunted Stalingrad still has that yeah crucial it, decisions it's still there we have some hellos by the way because hey. uh, we got dan in the house what up what up we got we got angela in the house too hey, we got angela. Early gamer in the house uh and then uh we also have by the way i dan, saw dan yeah. point out that he has to get back to the series he should uh also should we point out he does see the insert the, the folded space insert. insert yes 
Um, do you, do you get a commission on this? Do we get commission on this? We should get the commission on this. Yeah, where's our commission? Yeah, be sure to. So I'm, I'm really hoping something else is going to come out. I'm really hoping well, they do a Battle of the Atlantic one. Yeah, like a Navy style one. They probably well, the next one's outer space. The next yeah, one, but I want them that... to go back to Navy. It's oh, not about space. Oh, oh like well, we're trying ships. out of space. Oh, I'm definitely going to try. I already space. bought it. Here, so. yeah, 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 definitely going to try. But I'm, I'm hoping we go back to kind of World War Two and and we kind of choose other aspects. Of Before it. you get the next one up, um. Yeah. I saw the comment. You don't need to pull it up, but Brian Chandler asked if I would still recommend yeah, Dominion funny. for deck building. Now, here's the thing: maybe, uh, it, honestly, maybe it depends on what kind of board game player you are. If you are very much from the Magic the Gathering kind of background, I would recommend you go with Shards of Infinity. You know, it's got that vibe. Um, if you never played board games before, Dominion's fantastic to start with. Um, if you have played board games and want to see something a little bit with more excitement, the one that's not on my list at all, I recommend Clank, to be honest. I oh, like yeah. Clank, yeah, I like Clank, that. Clank yeah. integrates a board yeah. with yeah. deck building pretty pretty well. Um, and if money's no object, buy buy every deck builder I've listed on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clank, Shameless plug Clank, for everything. Yeah. I, yeah, the the, the clanks. And tell the publishers that we encourage a purchase. Yeah, uh, my number eleven is new to the list, and here's the thing: it was a 2023 release, and Undaunted Stalingrad was my number one, and it surpassed that. It some may say it oh. slipstream past it oh, because it's heat yeah, pedals yeah. to I, the metal. I knew this was gonna be in your list this year. Yeah, it it, it had to be. We've talked so much about this game, and I will just say before you dive into it, you introduced this game to me. I played the base game and the base map with no anything else, no modules. Yeah. And then, thank God, I went back and played it with the other stuff. Yeah. That's all I have to say because this game is fantastic. Click it. Click it. It is so good. Uh, in Heat, Pedal to the Metal. Uh, this is designed by Asker Harding uh, Grenier. And Daniel uh, Skjad Peterson. Now, Asker was the designer of Flam Rouge, which yeah. is a cycling game, and this very much feels like the 2.0. That's, that's one of my favorite games. I love Flam Rouge. Rouge. Yeah. I love Flam Rouge. With everything in it. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I have expansion, it. We'll do it after the, this. Uh, the Meteo expansion. Yeah. Flam Rouge is fantastic. Um, now, yeah. Heat, Pedal to the Metal, came out in 2022, and this game is very much, the, like I said, the 2.0 kind of thing. It mixes a whole racing aspect to it and what i love again about heat pedal to the metal and i keep always harping on this is the heat mechanic you're constantly <laughs> trying to push your right, cards right. as much as you can but not so far where you're completely ahead but it sometimes gets to a point where you are completely completely ahead and you're doing that by jockeying these heat cards which are in your engine deck and the more you exert the more heat cards you spend, and if you ever run out of heat cards in your engine deck, which is roughly like six cards, spin you wipe out. out, you spin out. Um, the constant balancing of putting heat cards back into my engine deck and taking them out is the best part about heat and the part that I keep coming back to. How do you describe... I'm interested in what your perspective on this is. I've said it before the, as like riding a rocket through a hedge maze. Yeah. How do you describe, but, the, how do you describe the balance in this one between... Luck and str between the concept of luck and strategy. Do you think this? I, I it's definitely m much more towards strategy. But how much does luck play into the cards, or is it? Is this a game where you? Oh, think, great amount. Yeah. yeah. Do you think a you great can? Great amount. I think with the thing that impressed me about this was you could get some bad cards, but you could still play your way out of bad out of a bad hand. Yeah. Because the deck works around because it's not a huge deck plus. When you build out the deck with the newer cards, That's what I was about to say. with that drafting yeah. mechanic, because to me, if you play this game, yeah, if you play this game and you're used to playing board games, just jump right in with that stuff because it shines when you add the draft. It's it's it was interesting to me because it, it's mechanically incredibly simple, and um, when you when you get the base game out of the box, um, I didn't get much out of it. But as Chris said, the minute you throw everything in it, yes. the game elevates to oh. a whole different level. Yeah. And I, this is one of the only games I've ever had regret over in the sense that I didn't buy this when it came out. I and mean, yeah. you couldn't get it in the States for 12, 18 months. Yeah. In fact, it's only really just before Christmas that it's it starting to get back. It's accessible. And then I played it last year at a bucket load of conventions. 
and I really had regret yeah. to the extent that actually I got my own copy delivered uh, a week and a half ago. With the expansion. With the expansion. Yeah, I know. So I have played the expansion. Have, anyone, have does anyone want a tiny spoiler or not? Uh, there's I spoilers in it? Well, I, I, well, I was going to tell you one of the, like, the mechanics. Uh, I was saying there's spoilers yeah. in the car, maybe. But go ahead. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, come on. Um, come games off you just, everyone just left. So yeah. I don't know if anyone's <laughs> looked at the expansion, but do you guys want to know what the go main ahead, mechanic ahead, is? It. So the expansion is generally set on the Japanese track. Yeah. And anyone who follows motor racing, the Japanese Grand Prix. Is always horrendously wet. Yes. So there is now a lot of permanent water on the track that um, reduces the speed by one. Ooh. So there are one speed corners fairly often. That's crazy. Oh, that's so insane. you're gonna you're gonna be bang speed break right down, bang speed break yeah. right down. So I think we're gonna see a lot more heat manipulation. Yeah. We're gonna see a lot more spinning out. Yeah. So I think we're going to see more interesting races for experienced players. Yeah. So I, I think in that it's a really clever expansion. And what I also like is this is an expansion that's come out two years after the game. Yeah. So they, it's taken like, on board a lot of feedback, a lot more playtesting. They yeah. didn't rush it out, which no, is nice. That's what I like about it. Uh, we did get the question. Oh, I yeah. can sub in my cars. Yeah, the pe the pieces. The, I think the cars are roughly like the size of, of thumb, thumb to thumbnail. knuckle. Yeah, like right? about an, like it's bigger about an inch. thumbnail. It's yeah, like, like about an inch, an inch long or so. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, by the way, and then I don't know if you saw this before, but uh, Flam Rouge feels betrayed. I, I have to agree because Flam Rouge to me is one of the best racing games ever. And then they made a better one. No, <laughs> no, to me, to me, they hit diff they're different. I, I still have both in my collection, they're different. I still have both in my collection, same base mechanic, but yeah. much different feeling. Oh, uh, yeah, squirrel micro machines. Yes, oh, you yeah. can sub your micro machines. Yeah, you could, show yeah, you could do micro Fantastic. machines for sure. And you could go really old school and you could. Do your own homebrew pod racing conversion yeah. and use Star Wars micro machines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just reskin it as pod racing. And then you know what we could do? We could call John Machida Jr. on Cameo and have him do his micro machines commercial. Oh boy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anyways, Anyways I, I feel like after out. this stream, we might be getting a heat out now after we've picked it all up. The hizzo, man. Yeah. yeah. I just want to point out you have now gone through your first 10. That was fast. And now we are entering your top 10. So now it's time for your number 10. My number 10 is my highest rated train game on this list. And that is Age of Steam. So Age of Steam. And yeah, that's a picture of me and my friend Louie playing. Uh, this game <laughs> is amazing. It's a train game where it's very, it's very pick up and deliver. You pick up cubes that match specific colors to deliver them to other places. But you can use other people's trains to deliver stuff. Granted, that gives them money. However, it is an extremely cutthroat game. Now, there is bankruptcy can be a thing. And in some maps, it's very much a thing where a player just sits out for the rest of the game. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't sound fun. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it may not be the train game for you, but it is for me because everyone going in knows it. And it's not like Monopoly, you're out and it's like right. more hours. Age of Steam has a lot of bite and if you're into that bite you are gonna love age of steam it's a game where you get more money the longer your delivery is but then also you can only deliver x amount of distance away based on how fast your locomotive is and then you're also going to be using money to uh bid on on turn order to build tracks and then pay income because anytime you want to get money you can you could just shipped out stock to your investors and automatically you get five bucks. But the thing is at the end of every round, every stock you've have ever given out, you have to pay back people. It is brutal beyond belief. There's also, I believe at this point, close to 300 maps of different ways wow. to play. Are those of Steam. official and custom or does that just, um, I think official is probably closer to a hundred. Okay, but still, um, that's pretty no, damn right impressive. Saying, is this the game where there's a body map? Yes, yes, the is human this, body the, map. Yeah, yes. the human body map. So yes, that's one of the fans. Yeah. yeah, and there's well, there's a whole con dedicated to this. And then Kansas yes, City, yeah, the Kansas yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler, Tyler says there's two hundred yeah. two hundred plus maps that are each that unique with rules. Yeah. Now the thing is, um, they all start with the same formula. And if you've played Steam, the game Steam, or if you've played uh, um, uh, Railways of the World. 
they very much iterate on top of this one. And there's even a newer game that's coming out from uh, Martin Wallace that is kind of iter iterative, iterative on this one. But this one has the biggest bite to it. Got it. And I love that. I feel like we should almost high. set up the 2025 yeah. Age of Steam Challenge where we have to play every match. I would love that. I would love that. But the problem is finding people to play it. I would play it. Now, here's the thing. I've said this before on the channel. Age of Steam multiplayer is a game I've only played once. I've only played it solo the rest of the times on different solo maps. Because getting people to play it is very tough. Tyler you do, you do. You. Tyler would come. Oh, Tyler would play it. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler would play it. Tyler would play it. to New Jersey and we can all play it. Well, show me halfway. Yeah. Shame, yeah, shame Con is still a possibility. Shame Con is still a possibility. Because it's on someone's shame. But, you know, there's literally a whole convention for this game in yeah. Kansas City, Kansas. Not the Missouri side, Kansas side. So I don't want to stress that. Um, but yeah, Age of Steam, Good fantastic choice. game. Oh, solid choice. You haven't played it. No, you will. But it's on my radar. I bought a copy of it on Ryan's recommendation. Yeah. Uh, at, uh, oh, packs, I, I, I keep packs, buying yeah. more stuff for it. Um, yeah, we need we need to play it, but I I want to start by playing the human body map. Okay, just because I don't I'm have really, that one, so I have the human body map. Oh, great! Then just we're I'm really intrigued yeah. by the idea of like moving around the human body. We'll play it. Huh. Yeah, picking stuff up. Oh, you've right. seen the movie Inner Space? Yeah, right, sorry, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Oh, all right, yeah, right? Let's yeah. Check. <laughs> okay. that's that's cool. All right, my number nine. Number nine was uh, just pull it up. It's Alchemist. It's Alchemist. Uh, this was my number seven last year. And yeah, there's a lot of pictures for it. <laughs> now, gonna say, out of uh, this game came out in 2014 from Czech Games Edition. It is an app driven board game. So, well, app assisted board game. And a kid's version of this is coming. There's a oh, kid's right, version so. coming out this year. Um, okay. Into that. So really cool. this game is a deduction game, sort of. Deduction is a part of this game, but it's largely a action selection game that is a parody on higher learning so in this game there are eight different kinds of ingredients out there there's like mushrooms and then there's like scorpions and all this stuff and they're all made up of a chemical composition of a of three symbols three one red one green one blue and of, of plus or minus permutations okay. all right and what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out which uh, which ingredients are that particular combination by combining two ingredients and scanning that card with your the card combination with your app to see what potion they produce because there's a whole mathematical equation into what potion they actually produce if it's positive or negative and stuff. And in the game, it's about as much BSing as possible because you get victory points for publishing theories and the thing is when you publish theories on what is out there you don't get paid you have to pay to publish your own books because it's higher learning um you publish your own theory <laughs> yeah you would yeah, yeah. you I'm both are, learning, you both so are gonna yeah. love this so you have to Probably publish not. theories out and then even then when you publish out theories you could be completely wrong about it but you'll get certain victory points for publishing first um and then even then you could kind of Hedge your bets. Like, I know that the green and blue of this are right, but not the red. So I'll put down the secret thing that says I don't know what the red is. Or I'll, it'll score me five victory points or three victory points. And then other players can choose to endorse that and then okay. give you money. Or they could choose to debunk that theory and prove it wrong. <laughs> And That's then publish like. their own and theory, more, and then they get the money, and they, they and and then money. your yeah. and, and your yeah. reputation goes down, That's and theirs exactly. goes up. Um, it's brilliant. <laughs> now, it's also fantastic because when you're testing the potions, you're testing them out on interns until one of the interns gets poisoned by one of the potions. In which case, all the other interns hear about it, so they don't want to taste it until they get paid a buck to do so. And money is so precious in this game. And not only so that, they're willing to be poisoned for the money. Yeah, you can also test it out on yourself and possibly get some bad consequences if, if it's a negative based oh, potion. Right. I, I just I want to play. I've never and, played this either. No, and, and and then also too, there's different merchants. Uh, there's different travelers that are coming out, and you can choose to sell potions to them and guarantee them if it's going to be an exact match or close enough, or it won't kill you. Or you're at your own risk, and depend and depending on what you offer is what price you're going to get, and betting on that and not trying to sell them something and not know what you're selling them is hilarious. 
This game is all about BSing. And if you play it to really focus on the deduction portion, I don't believe you're going to enjoy it as much as you are always holding to the bottom of your chair, just seeing where this game is going to go because it's absolutely bonkers and wild. Now, what's the best play count for this? Uh, honestly, cool. I love it at two. I love it at okay. two, my favorite, because mm. with two, you get more workers than in three or four player count. So you do have more opportunities to kind of Sudoku it all out okay. because that's how the deduction works in this game. You kind of Sudoku it all out until you get whatever is out there. Um, so I love it at two is my favorite player okay. count. Um, but I would play it at three or four. But I'm guessing maybe the banter around the table with oh. four of you. Oh, yeah. It's wild. And the bluffing and the having a go. And oh, yeah. Cool and then at the very last, yeah. last round, there's like a magic tournament where these different wizards get to see you perform your potion out and then you'll gain victory points and oh, you boy. do stuff. It's great. <laughs> I uh, A few comments we have to bring up. Uh, sure. Squirrel says, enjoy Alchemist. Lol, well, because I know he is not the biggest He fan. does not. He hates it. But he plays it with me. Angel's got it for birthday last year. It's still in shrink. Oh, it's so. a fantastic, oh, okay. Shrink. Now, fantastic pull. Now, Rachel, which I want to point out, Rachel has on our Discord been updating us as she's played through a good portion of the stuff from our top twenties. She did an overall year. forty. Yes, list. she oh, did wow. made a forty Excellent. list from our top twenties last year. Okay, and this was one of the few she didn't get to, but she did such a good job getting to the majority of them. It was really important. She made the list of forty based off. I think we had 80 some unique ones last year. Yeah. Or something like oh, that. About, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Brian. by the way, Brian says this checks out. He wrote a college textbook years ago. I made zero dollars. I can agree with Brian. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> <Hang> <laughs> on Roadway Safety, still available on Amazon. Ooh. Oh, and I know you. I know what I'm getting you for your birthday this year. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I will. Brian, you, we autograph it. Oh. <laughs> so, he probably will. He will. He will. He will. He will. I'll take it. So that was my number nine, Alchemist. And I'm going to talk more likely about my number, my top 10, if yeah. you like. All right. My number eight is new to the list. And it's because I never played it fully until last year. And I was hooked on Ra by Reiner Kinesia. Oh, yeah, I'm, a little I'm not shocked that this made your list because you've talked a lot about this one. And I played it. I played this game literally right after i did my top 20 of all time and after playing it i was like this game is going to be on my list next yeah, year you know where was this game pull it up Ra in this particular version the 25th century games edition which i believe you helped down i on. did a little bit of work on this so i'm okay. partial to a bit of raw but yeah. i paid full price yeah. because i did not know you no no and either <laughs> then i probably still would pay full and price. i have no financial stake in the game yeah. unfortunately because it's done incredibly well <laughs> yeah i mean and, it's and raw. chad is flying through whenever he does a chad is the uh the owner of 25th century whenever chad does a reprint it goes so, so it's still hard to get hold of so rob by reiner knizia is the best auction game out there and okay we got egyptian art and stuff but it is the best auction game now in this game it is a very very tight auction where it's a push your luck style auction because the whole uh what you're bidding on every turn you're going to be adding a new tile to that potential pot of bids and as things get added to that pot some things will actually end the game a lot sooner so you don't want to end it before you buy something. You also There's also some hazards that may make some things in that pot completely worthless, or even worse, ruin your existing tableau. Not only that, you can only bid based on the number of players either four or three times in the yeah. entire game. Yeah. Um, it's one of the tightest options. Once you bid, you are out for bidding that rest of the round with that particular piece. And that bidding token that you just spent on that winning bid gets sent out into the general market. And whatever tile was originally there in the general market goes to you for next round because games only takes three rounds. That's my favorite part of mechanic because we played this at uh, Montclair Gleaming Group, Montclair yeah. Gaming mm -hmm. Group uh, mm -hmm. event. And I know you, you brought it when you just got this copy. Yeah. So it was right after we've done those videos, yeah. like I said. Uh, and I just remember Excuse me. being so incredible. I enjoyed this. So don't mistake this as like I didn't have a good time. Being so frustrated when I realized 
just how tight that market was yeah. and i misplayed one because i knew how consequential it was yeah it's very consequential every action you take matters and in an auction game where you don't know yeah. what anyone else is going to do and you don't know what's going to come no, out you don't you can infer but you really don't know right so uh, it's and so you're constantly even if it even if you're not it, one of the things i like in a game is when you're when it's interactive to me does not necessarily mean someone else is going in a spot knocking me out or something that interactive means i'm fully just invested paying attention yeah and i have to yeah this you have to yeah you have to be oh, mindful yeah. the entire so, so you're in what we call flow state yeah, as a psychologist, so you're so invested, nothing else matters. Oh yeah, yeah. and Rob will so suck that's you what we in want from a game. We want to yeah. put our players into flow it's, state, it, and this yeah. does it beautifully. And then it gets to the super exciting part where there's just one person left that has one last bidding token, likely. And the question is, do you keep going and try to uh, and try to see how big that pool's going to go and potentially? have it all blow away or do you invoke raw and start an auction and just take what's there sometimes you may even just invoke raw on not what tiles are out there but what bidding tokens out there that bidding token alone might be huge enough for you because the other thing too what's great about raw is there are points and you don't know what anyone else's points are because they're all kept hidden Yep. So there's not, yep. you could kind of count them in your head if you really want to, but I probably don't want to play raw with you. If you're doing that, you really just want to focus on raw and that's the best way to love raw. And the other thing about raw that does this game better than any other auction game I've seen. It's fantastic at every single player count. A five player game of raw is great. A two player game of raw is great, which is unheard of for a lot of auction games. Yeah. You know, it how it's how elegant Raw is, and it came out in 1999, and it's still light years ahead. So, what was really good when 25th picked it up is that Raw had been out of print for so long, and the prices on the secondary market were astronomical. Oh, it's ridiculous that everyone had heard about how great this game was, but people couldn't get a copy. Yeah, yeah. And then 25th put it out, and suddenly, even if you didn't want to go all in on the incredible production of the deluxe, the retail version is yeah, yeah fantastic i would pick well. up the retail so, version be perfectly happy with it as but, much as i've yeah. seen that gorgeous yeah. version but the, ba yeah. the balance with um with raw is great when we think about um Kinitzi as a mathematician yeah good dr Kinitzi. so that's why i think the balance is so good at two player all the way through to five player yeah because mathematically i've i've been fortunate to work on a few things that Kinitzi designed and everything's spreadsheets yeah. Like it's amazing the depth he goes into to ensure it is all mathematically balanced. And he does that before he starts thinking about theme mm -hmm. and layering on top. So for Kinitsu's designs in general, I think they're incredibly well thought out. I mean, it feels like because you look the theme at, is you very think about his on. other you think about his other games. Yeah. They're all incredibly well balanced yeah. at, at multiple player counts. Yeah. There's give and take, there's push and pull. That all works really well. Um, so yeah, I, I was so I'm incredibly pleased to see this on your list because I, I think this is one of the best games of all time. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Right we do so, a prediction, by the way. Yeah. Brass Birmingham soon, according to a squirrel. Birmingham so, is it? It's Birmingham. Yeah. Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I always do that with or with a proper. I know. Here, well, I, if I can be corrected, I'm, or, I'm uh, happy to be corrected by <laughs> him. Birmingham. There you go. <laughs> there. It's pretty People good in Birmingham. Speak like that. They do. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham. I apologize to anyone watching from either Birmingham's. I don't because I'm from <laughs> Liverpool. And there's a little bit of a rivalry. Liverpool's Ah, oh, there you go. All right. Well, my number seven. So for a long time, uh, people have always suspected this game would be my top 20. And now it is. It's Cosmic Frog. There it is. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's about damn time. Uh, designed by Jenna Felly. Hold on. This is worth it. <laughs> yeah, I am a... <laughs> If this is, should have been on your, your list last year. I am a cheerleader of <laughs> Cosmic Frog, designed by Jenna Felly. Came out in 2020 from Devious Weasel Games. Um, Cosmic Frog is the smartest dumb game I've ever played in my entire life. In the game, you are playing as two-mile-tall frogs in outer space, going and eating parts of the planet, getting them into your mouth, 
sticking them down into your gullet, leaping out into the ether outer space and disgorging them out into your vault to score victory points. Um, all of this with every player having completely unique powers that break the game. <laughs> and not only that, if you don't like interactive games where, uh, well, if you're not okay with getting hit it's in the a face. It's a take that game. Yes. Yeah. It oh, is a take that game. Yes. It's, it's, an, it's a then some take that game. Yeah. In T Cosmic Frog, you are going to be slugging out other frogs and sticking your tongue right into their gullet and pulling out all these different land shards. And then, not only that, uh, you are now a target because now you are the one that has it. And the great thing about Cosmic Frog is you can't really predict it because there's no consistent player turn order. The turn order is completely comprised of a deck of cards that's you flip it over and it's that player's turn. So, oh my god, I love it! I love it! Oh I my just god, I can't believe that that Jenna that she was able to come up with a theme, yeah, like this. Well, originally it was supposed to be, uh, I believe, giants. And yeah. then the leaping mechanic came about because she wanted to explain how is the leaping mechanic going to work. Doesn't she talk about that, that with you in the creators corner? We did. I believe so. I need we'll to have to, I'll I'll have to link. That's that. my first creators but corner. But I mean, how do you go? How do you go from giants and you know stepping or leaping giants to vomiting outer space frogs? Well, it's great. I mean, I, mean, I can't. Yeah. I mean, that imagination what, leap is fantastic. But what we just heard you do the, that explanation is one of one of a re I to this day I will say. Because when this channel started, it was just me interviewing people. Yeah. When you gave me the explanation of Cosmic Frog and explained it, I, I immediately knew, like, man, yeah, I got to have him on the channel more. Yeah. And it was the explanation of Cosmic Frog because it's my favorite way that I've ever heard anyone describe a game. Uh, this game is so interesting. When I, I remember any time I've seen you introduce this, I've watched you introduce this to many people. Yeah. I love watching their face realize oh, that I get this. Yeah. It's it, it, and and they don't know what they're getting into. And by the end, they're like, this is fantastic. Yeah. You know, when TV shows parody board games and they're saying all these complex things about a board game that are just making people's heads turn, this is that game. Yeah. And it does it so well. So if you if you're like me and watch those parodies that are making fun of that sort of thing, and we're like, wait a minute, I want to play that. Guess what? That's the game. Cosmic Frog is Royal Rumble in outer space. If you like wrestling, it is Royal Rumble in outer space. Yes. It is, again, the dumb, the smartest dumb game I've ever played because everything that's going on is just wild. And the expansion takes it up to a new level. There's different ways to combat now. There's psychic mental blasts that you can shoot out to make the frogs projectile vomit pieces in their gullets and then other frogs in the firing line can scoop up with their tongues oh, yeah, and yeah, snatch them up yeah yeah like oh, no, it's, it's great game. and then the game too there's a suggested short medium and long game but even then there's no set player time because what's going to happen is parts of the board are going to be disintegrating and if six uh if like six bad ones come out the game is over and you go immediately into scoring. Yep. And as the game goes on, meteors are going to come and destroy parts of the planet. Oh, man. Yeah, and it's that uncertainty when you get to a certain point that this might be it. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. And it's so exciting when you get to go. And then you get to go again because your card came yeah. out again. And then you get to go again because your card came out again until you realize, oh, man, I am done for this round. I am a sitting duck now. And that's it. Like yeah. you're just stuck for the rest of the round. Take, the take that's fun though, because we've played some games, yeah, and you feel picked on with take that, yeah, or the take that takes away from other elements of the game. This game is all about take that to it, some extent. It is, and everybody has to dish out, yeah, but yes. everybody also receives. Yes, and you that, don't that's really take that. You it. don't. This does take that to the level. You're, you're mm -hmm. not too angry, but no, it's fun. It's not you're Munchkin. Right. It, it, it's fun. It's, it's no, not just yeah. arbitrary. Yeah. Take that. We're There's talking. There's a need for it. There is a need yeah. for it. It yes. drives because you have to steal stuff from yeah. the frogs. You have to. Well, you know, send them out into the. I mean, you can play well, completely without yeah. doing that. The, the best no you may not do well. <laughs> the, the craziest thing about this all, just for anyone who has never heard of Cosmic Frog, the end game is the area that you've the yeah. stuff the the land tiles on. How, how do we do that again? I want to see <laughs> that again. I don't know. Yeah, but, Lem? yeah Lem. sorry. <laughs> Different game. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it's that. So it's after all this, it comes down to who's built the best, you know, collection of land tiles at what level. Oh, yeah, that's the best part because the, the score, no matter how aggressive you can be, it's the scoring at the end of how you just place your tiles and your vault is what matters. That's yeah. it. We have some folks joining, by the way. I'm just going to go through just so everyone can see uh, all the things. I see Danielle is in the chat, which we're going to be hearing from her yeah. in next uh, week. Next week with her own top 20 list. So let's just highlight our 20s for now. We got Cockroach Poker, Shards of Infinity, Through the Ages, Rococo, Mage Knight, Patchwork, Spirit Island, Dominion, Undaunted Stalingrad, Heat, Pedal to the Metal, Age of Steam, Alchemist, Ra, Cosmic Frog. All of these games are not as good as my number six. And what is that? It's El Grande. Of course it is. Of course With it's five El Grande. players. With five players. I, it's important. It's, I've, it's like ingrained in my head. El Grande, not with less than five. This, yeah. If you've seen my top 20s before... Get ready because this is likely this one feature last year. Number six. Okay, so it's, <laughs> okay, so it's, it's, it's pretty solid. Pretty solid all you still haven't done okay. El Grande. I've not. No, again. Pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. There are a lot of classics I've yet to play. Look at that board fest. El Grande. So beige. When people when people when I explain board games to some people, some people will say, Oh, you're you're one of those board gamers that play like Risk, right? El Grande is the <laughs> area <laughs> control game. That is for me. Like this is the area control game. Everything is compared to El Grande for me when it comes to area control, and none have done it better. In my right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. When you finish, I'm gonna challenge you with a game. Okay. Let's see what you think. El Grande came out in 1995, designed by Wolfgang Cram, uh, Wolfgang Kramer, and Richard Ulrich. Um, this game is wonderful. It's delightful. It's everything that i want in a board game it is constant in your face player interaction where there is no direct combat like wrist style where you're rolling dice and stuff you're just placing out your meeples or your cubes out and then it's the next it's the next player's turn to kind of do the same um there's an auction at the beginning well like there's a bidding at the beginning of every round it's a small bid and the well the bid matters because Whoever is going first, some cards, uh, some benefits mm. out there are going to be beneficial to some players, and some you want to prevent those players from getting them. Others you want to get them because you need them. Because I believe there's only nine turn. Yeah, there's nine rounds in this game. It's not long. It's not long. And they're scoring at round three. They're scoring at round six, and then there's final scoring at round nine. And all those different regions you're placing out, you are placing adjacent to that awfully phallic looking piece over there which is the king the king's land is taboo you cannot place in the king's land but when you place out pieces you're going to place them all adjacent to the king um or you can place them in the castillo which is a nice okay. little cardboard uh castle okay. and yeah. those you just place them in and it's completely hidden until it's time for scoring and when it does count time for scoring you're going to score that region and then all the ones from that region are going to get sent out to specific spots on the board that are determined by the players. And then what's going to happen is you score out those regions and any sorts of ties go down a level. So let's say a level like first place is going to get six points. If there's a tie for first place, no one gets the first place stuff. Those players get second place. And then okay. whoever right. was get next goes the third um and that's it there's only scoring for up to three values yeah so it's extremely tight you need to always be on your feet there's a huge advantage for going last because you get to um you get to see what is going okay. on yeah. and kind yeah. of place your and, and always be shifting your strategies but, yeah, but sometimes also, you have to go first sometimes because, you have to go first because those powers some of them God, you could be in a tough spot that if you don't get it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So you have to take that risk that if I go here, but there's a good chance things are going to happen that are going to impact you in a negative way because you went first. So you, you've got to strike that balance in this one. And I was really impressed because this is, I've played this, I've never played the actual physical version. I've played just the online, um, but real time. 
critically yeah. important. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can play this if async. You, if you play this online, if you'd use the board game arena or something to play, play it in real time. Yeah, you know, there's. I, I actually think we recorded a playthrough of this. We on did the channel. So did. you you actually I can I'll, I'll put a link to that uh, after the fact. But what a great experience! And I will just say, I, I am excited to play the physical yeah. version of it. But I don't think it would matter if I played the physical version or the online version. The gameplay on this is simple and straightforward, yeah. yet so deeply strategic, which yeah. is such a perfect balance with board games. So I, it, it, be, it being in your your top 10, I totally understand it. Uh, and I really have come to understand why this game is so important to you. Yeah. So I definitely want to play this now. You're going to love right. it. You're going to yeah. love it. It's been around for a long time. I've read a lot about it. But to hear your endorsement of it. This has to be on on the table this year. The stress, the three of us. No, no, no. Two other players. Yes, two no, other no, players. I mean, with two yeah. of us, but we need more players. Yeah, and that is the stress. We have so to do. It. This game was woefully out of print until this year, where it's now brand new. There's a new edition. Uh, it's still beige. Um, still, I like beige. Play play with five players if you can. Yeah. Even the new edition, which has updated rules for lower player counts. Play it with up to no, five, five the max. Five is the max right. and five yeah. is the best. Okay. Four is pretty okay. good. All right. That's it. So <laughs> how so the area control game that to me is one of the best I've ever played is Ethnos. Um so I never finished a game of Ethnos. Okay. El Grande, I prefer over Ethnos. You okay. played both. All right. I've played both. I I preferred El Grande. Personally, okay, but all right, okay. So now I, I really want to play because I, I love Ethnos. But to be so fair, I really want to play this. Yeah, I, I El Grande just again, it is that combination of the simplicity of the actions you are taking, the powers being easy, the, the those the things are the auction okay. phase being yeah easy to understand and and ultimately I didn't feel like the game dragged at all. It felt like it just kept moving. Yeah. Um. Even though you had some tough choices to make. Yeah. It didn't ever feel like it slowed down, so the pace was really good. So for me, El Grande, oh, I really liked it. Um, El Grande on on this list so far, which we have now gone through, uh, we're we're in uh, on we're approaching top, top five, five. I will say Heat and El Grande are two that I would also own, even though I, I as I always joke, I have access to the Espen collection. Those are two that I would own without question. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I just I just want to play El Grande. Yeah. Nice yeah yeah, yeah without and and also like the folks that are watching be excited a new el grande is out yeah. there's no woefully out of print edition yes. anymore for now yeah. until it is out of out of and and we got a packed house so i do want to say thank you everyone for tuning in friendly reminder we're going to have wow, at least 32. five excellent yeah at least five more of these i believe maybe six more of these with uh other members of the channel and some of our fellow creators who take home in the tabletop express discord so uh we'll yeah, you're boring it. them yeah i'm boring them i it's one person <laughs> <laughs> let's go to number five number five who was it people who was it <laughs> <laughs> my number five for a long time was my number one and now it's my number five and that is agricola by uve oh, rosenberg I love, it. I love it it's one of the first games i ever played uh so uh, agricola very much is in that vein for me too because i was excited when this game was coming out on how much excitement there was in the board game geek community. I started getting into the board game hobby in 2005. And when people were flipping out over Agricola, I was like, I need to play this game. So I went to my local game shop at the time. They never even heard of Agricola. Uh, so I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. Um, so out of any place, I wasn't even ex looking for it. At near Comic-Con in 2008, I saw it. And I picked it up. And I was in. I was sitting down. At a Bruce Campbell Q and A, and I was just in the audience, just looking at my Agricola pieces. Bruce Campbell Q and A. I love Bruce Campbell. I know, but you're looking at a wooden phone. Yeah, but I, I oh, found okay. I found right. Agricola. So this beats Bruce Campbell Q and A. Yes, I mean, well, okay. it, that, it, it goes, it, good. It, it pairs well with Bruce Campbell's yeah, okay. Q and A. Right. Um, so in Agricola, it is a board game about farming. Uh, it is incredibly mean. It is incredibly tight. It is incredibly brutal. Yeah. Uh, it is about farming in the 16th century, where every turn you are going to be doing as much as you can and not having enough people to do it. And then eventually you will breed and have people to do it. 
but then those are more mouths to feed, and you can only have more offspring if you have room for them, which is precious because your board is only 15 spots. But at the very end, hopefully, you have a beautiful looking farm out there right on the board for you. Mean is the word though, because mean there the are word. there are certain times you just need something. Yeah. And you're not gonna get it for another round. Yeah. Like you're Melissa, you 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 have a choice between two actions really that you both you need both of them and your opponent probably wouldn't mind they need, one the, of them, they need the same they, stuff and they need certain things now because your systems are not that that you're developing to score the most points aren't that unique that there's enough things that you all are going to want yeah it's not the first worker placement game but it is the classic worker placement game i would say yeah. and it, it's is the but bus is one of the first. It's not the the first either. Right. It's one of the earliest. Bus bus and this are the ones I think of when I think of early worker placement. But though. this game for sure emphasizes how crucial that worker placement spots are because there are very little of them. And if someone takes them, you are not gonna be able to take them for the rest yeah. of that turn. And you want population, but you don't want population. Yeah. It's it's like you want more resources, but at the same time, at the sacrifice of what? And then you want people, but then you've got to feed the people. So it's it you also need to have a balance too. You can't just focus on one thing in your farm. You need a balance because not having some things in your farm are going to make you lose victory points. Yeah, and then hitting a certain threshold of that specific specific thing you have. Like if you have a lot of sheep, well, that's great, but they only you know they they cap off at a certain point. What I what I like about this is if you'd have pitched this and you just said, "Let's all play a game about farming." Yeah. Most people would be like, no. Oh, absolutely. Farming is the most boring, benign subject ever. Absolutely. But yeah, um, they did a cracking job, or, or they did a cracking job making farming exciting, but not only exciting, cutthroats was an extremely cut. And and that's what I think is really good about this game. Plus yeah. the drafting of cards that yeah. you can do. Oh, yeah, and that's great. Yeah. When you do the yeah. drafting of cards with the professions. So. Right. Well, and you can also, the amount of no expansions that have come out in the last 20 years of this. But to me, I still love playing this game at its base level. I played it with a number of different X yeah. decks, the Z deck, the yeah. Alien deck, the Dutch deck, the French deck. And I, I've got loads of different stuff oh, for yeah. it. But this is... <laughs> this is not for you, Rachel. This is brilliant. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a plug if anybody goes to Origins. Yeah. There's a guy who every year at Origins towards the back of the uh, get one of the big gaming halls because it's always in um, the Columbus Convention Center, brings a giant version of Agricola. Oh, man. Every player, you know how normal Agricola, your board is like 12 inches? Yeah, yeah. Like a piece of paper size? In the giant Agricola, one person sits on a giant folding table. Mm. And each fence is like 12 inches long. And he uses handmade like woolen sheep, you yeah. know, like 12, 18 inches. Yeah. And every animal's like that. He takes up a space that is bigger than your board game room. Like it's two or three times the That's size awesome. of this to play a game of Agricola. Oh, I, I would love it. It is that. fantastic. So if you're an Agricola fan, fly to Columbus, pay for <laughs> Origins, and um, make sure you get to at least see, if not enjoy, giant Agricola. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think this game's this game's phenomenal. Yeah, and I would and uh, Agricola, I would love. I I love teaching new board gamers or people into board gaming. Like if if you want to play something really rough, this is this is it. Like it like have a rough time, but it's a rewarding time because again, at the end, you get to see your farm, and hopefully, it was a good farm. Man, so it's been it has been seven years since I last played this. Yeah, like I know how long it's been. It's been seven yeah. years since I played it. Before. I do want to highlight. The, really I do want to highlight the cards though, because you de you like playing without them. I love playing with the cards because the decision is you can't do all the cards, but when you do the draft, you're identifying what strategies you should probably go for, and you can play to that strategy for the cards. But again, you're likely not going to play all the cards. And it's amazing as a solo game as well, too. Agricola is fantastic solo. Oh, don't get me wrong. I, love, I didn't mean I don't like playing with the cards. What I like about this is there's maybe 20 or 25 different expansions. Yeah, and you, you don't, don't only that. need Agricola. You don't need to buy the expansions. Correct. There's enough in the yeah. game. So well, it wasn't, it wasn't a fact that... The revised edition in 2016 they didn't dropped know. a lot of cards. Yeah. yeah, It still has a good amount of cards, but... You you want more of the expansions. I will just say with the cards, the one thing I like about this, it does give me choices, and I can choose the two or three cards that mean the most to me. Yeah. So I like it as a 
as a as a player even when I was learning. Yeah. Like that was nice. Yeah. It gave me a kind of a path. So all right. My number four has not changed since last year. I love this game. It's Crokinole. Uh it's the most expensive game on my list, probably. Uh and Eric, I told you to be back with my son. Um Crokinole. That's it. It's a big wooden disc. Uh okay. This game came out allegedly in 1876 in Canada. It is a uh, dexterity game. It is a flicking game. And I thought I hated dexterity games. But Crokinole is the best dexterity game. Uh, you are going to be flicking your disc out. And if there are no opponent discs on the board, you want to stay in that center circle or even get into the middle circle. If there is an opponent's disc on the board, your disc needs to touch their disc and then go in the center circle. It can go in the center if circle. If you're a good player. If you're a good yeah. player. There's a lot of skill in Crokinole. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal game. Uh, and again, it doesn't look too exciting. But compare it. And I've heard comparisons, obviously, to like table tennis. You know, like ping pong. Mm -hmm. uh, comparisons like that. And does this count as a board game? I think so because there's a BGG entry. Uh yeah, and I'm glad Rachel got to play it. She's had so much fun and extremely addictive. Um, I played it for the first time uh, yeah. this year, right? Locally, I know yeah, with uh, with our friend Rob. Rob. Yeah, and I was just—I'd always seen this at conventions and thought, "What is the point? What's the big deal?" Game? Yeah, and then I sit down and play, and I was two hours late getting home that night. Yeah, we yeah. just Rob and I just played back back and forth. Um, yeah, and what I like about it is. It's you have control with your disc because your disc disc has a smooth and a rough side. It does. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yep. Or it's either smooth. Or it's rough concave, or concave, convex, convex. Right. Okay. Yep. Convex. Yeah. Right. So you get a fast slow. See, so it's not just a case of a simple flick. Correct. Because you look at other dexterity games and it's just a simple flick. Yeah. Correct. But you're making that choice about you've got a little bit more if you're not as dexterous. You also can't move your chair. Yep. You have to have at least yep. one buttocks and on then, the chair at all times. The quadrants you have to always come in from. You yet to be within the quadrant. Around, yep. Yeah, you have to be so within really the quadrant. Like and those little dots sticky up things in the middle of the board. The bumpers. Are so frustrating. And the, the thing is, so some crocodile boards that have wooden pegs, this one has like legit uh you know pinball bumpers. Oh okay. All like, right. It I feels need to like play that. on this one because the one I played on Rob is like a, a wooden peg. Oh. You have not played Crocodile then. But what <laughs> I like about Crocodile is that you, you have the you know you can power through. Yeah. I'm really flick hard if you, yeah. you know you're going to knock the other guy off, yeah. but you're probably going to follow. But you want to make sure, yeah, you or stay on you the board. Can do this like angled kind of yeah. trick bounce and, and use the buttons. and then it turns into the and then it turns to an air control game. Yeah. Who has the more pieces on the, the board? The scoring's really good. The scoring's fantastic. So the scoring, right? The winner of the round gets the difference in points. So if I have 20 points, you have 15 points. I get five points, and we move on to the next round. Yeah. You play until you reach 100 yeah. points. That's standard Crokinole with 12 discs. You could also do tournament rules where you just do four rounds, and you have eight buttons each. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen I, – I, I like both. So yeah. I love that last comment. I'm not sure where I land on this. Hopefully uh, in the sense. Hopefully in the, in the yeah. 20th. Yeah. 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 I, I, I enjoy this one. This is this – is, it's fun. Like I said, I – this does not I well it's not in my top 20, but I very much enjoy this one. I and I think I now though am at the point where I could not have this game at a lower quality than the board that you have yeah. because now I've played on your board. Yeah. And now I'm like oh, Yeah, I know. Once you play like on the the kind of boards that like mine is from uh Tracy Boards, yep. uh who was on the channel for Creators Quarter. Yes. Um it is so smooth, and it is so just you're flicking it. I heard shut up and sit down and talk about it like flicking on a giant piece of ice. Like so, it, remind, it reminds me of like an old style English pub game. Sure, yeah, it has that like vibe. Board and dogs. Yeah. it's on that elk. Yeah, that's, that's my that only struggle. Kind of only struggle yeah. with this one is literally from the price perspective. I would want that quality board. You'd want a three hundred dollar. But but that's is that worth for my collection? For me personally, probably not on my dime. But what I complain if it ended up in my collection, no. So it's like one of those like it's things. also the only board game in my collection that stays in my living room, hung up on the wall. Yeah, 
I, 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 <laughs> I, could, I could just imagine if Ryan's wife walked in and suddenly there's a Gricola pinned to the wall. I mean, <laughs> I, I did determine there was a good way for this to be in my collection. It could be art on the wall. I would just need a high quality version like that. Of and Captain, Captain America. America. Yep. And now I've got a Captain America shield and a, and a board. I can see the discussion though about, you know, is this a game or is yeah. this not a game? Or, or if it is a game, what is it for? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, like but a board I, game. I, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. I, I, I think you know, if you take the, the idea, a board game um, has a defined win objective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has rules of play. Then this is a board game. It's a board yeah. game. It's yeah. a board game. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. It is a board game. It's not. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say ping pong is a board game because it's a whole table, right? So I wouldn't say ping pong would be a board game, but I would consider. Crokinole to be a board game. That's a debate because you put it on a table. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> if, if, if you're saying it's table size, then there's a couple of new. It's Tyler. New it's worth it though. Three ninety five Canadian dollar dues is worth it for the best Crokinole board. And Mr. Rao will deliver to you personally. Yeah, just kidding. I don't and know. Dollar, <laughs> I mean, yeah, dollar, dollar dues aren't real. No, they yeah. Don't yeah. Count, do yeah, they? it's they don't no, really they count. translate. So all right. Yeah. All so right. We are coming into your top three. Top three, and. It, I'm guessing. What's up, Doctor J? I'm guessing we're going to see some old friends. Oh yeah. So it'll be very interesting what order they are. So let's uh, let's dig into your number three. My number three is a game I play pretty much every day online, and that is Brass Birmingham. And I've been playing it with the same two people for two years now. Uh, obviously, not the same game, but many, many times. It's a dark, Games of really Brass Birmingham. Math, isn't it? It's isn't that? It's very reminiscent that's of what I, Birmingham. That's yeah. why I imagine. Yeah, it's really that's. What I just what imagine all like. of England yeah. is like. So uh, I never have been. Not not but, quite. Yeah, I imagine. But, uh, yeah, I mean the weather's generally grey. Yeah. Wow. So, anyways, well, yeah, there's a lighter on. side too. So, in Brass Birmingham, designed by Gavin Brown, Matt Tolman, and Martin Wallace, uh, this was the sequel to Brass original Lancashire. Brass or Brass Lancashire. No, it's. Uh, as it's now known. Um, and this came out in 2019, and I was falling asleep when I was learning. I never done this before, but I love watching Watch It Played. And this I've always fallen asleep in Rodney Smith's Watch It Played. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like I fall asleep with Lawrence of Arabia, but I love he's Lawrence got a good Arabia. voice though. He's got it's a good really soothing voice. Tone, yeah. It's like a 45 minute teach. Get into bed, get the duvet on it. There's a lot going on in Brass Birmingham that it seems very, very, very intimidating. Brian, I'm glad you got to play it. And here's the thing I love Brass Birmingham. There's a lot going on. Very wonky at times. You gotta sell things and then add beer on top of it, and things are kind of going all over the place. What's considered part of my network? All these sorts of questions. But there's one thing That's I've it. always noticed with Brass Birmingham. I want to play it again as soon as I'm done. As soon as I'm done with Brass Birmingham, I want to play it again. It's two hours, and I want to play it again. What's great is the game actually does that already because you effectively play the game twice. You play the canal era, and then you score, and then you flip over the canals to turn them into rails, and then you play the rail era. Um, this game is great because all the resources are on the table and they may not belong to you, but you could use them if you could reach them, unless they're iron, in which case you don't need to necessarily reach them. Or if they're your own beer, in which case you don't necessarily need to reach them. But with coal, you do because coal is very heavy. Um, this game, it's got everything going for it. I don't know what else to say other than I will just keep playing. I, I, enjoy, playing I enjoy this playing because it. this, you know, this came out after I, I left the UK about 10 years before this came out. And I bought this game, not knowing anything about it, Yeah. but I bought it because it had a UK theme. And then I opened the board and I'm like, yep, this is kind of Birmingham and that part of the country is called the Midlands. It's dark, dank, depressing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yep, Martin, you've really captured that aspect of the Midlands. And I love seeing the town names. I love the idea, the whole of the Midlands is based on the canal and the coal industry. And then Peaky Blinders, of course, came out. I never thought Peaky Blinders, which is all set around the Midlands. Oh man! So you can watch Peaky Blinders, pay brass, wear a flat cap, and drink warm flat beer. Did they make pottery? And it's like a whole. They make pottery. There you well, go. Not pottery is just doing Peaky Blinders, but Staffordshire, which is one of the towns in here, is Staffordshire pottery. Mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend? Oh. I think you would recommend this. Yeah, I I would say, and just so when I speak about this game, I have to tell you, 
I remember playing this with Ryan, and we played the first. We played the 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 first side. Canal. The, the 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 first canal side, era. The canal yeah. era. And I I started things started to click. So went to Zach Ren, and I had that exact feeling because this was on my top ten last year. Um, my top twenty last year. Might have been my top ten last year. Um, but I remember just being like. Oh man, I wish I had more time because now that I got that, I'd like to play again. It, it, it just there's a brilliant design in the sharing of the goods. It's really great and rewarding to unlock this, but now someone else might be able to use these. So like again, it's that interactive level that I talked about. That it doesn't even need to be me doing something, but I'm very mindful of. Oh man, someone else might do that and take advantage of what I just did. Yeah. So it's all interconnected. No, I yeah, do, I do think it's a multiplayer game in the sense of that your first play. I think a lot of people I've spoken to play this, and I, I personally found this quite challenging my first play. Um, in the sense of I enjoyed it, but I didn't feel like I achieved much. I think the learning curve can be a little steep at times in Brass. Yeah. But I think your second and third play, that's where the game really rewards you. Yeah. When you get into the strategy a little bit more yeah. and you understand the mechanics, because as you said, the mechanics can be a little bit more. The fun. first play needs a good teacher, is the way I describe it. I think the first play needs a good teacher because the first play of this one, um, if you had a bad teach, I could imagine not wanting to go back to this. Yeah, that, I that. and I don't think that's the same. I think that's not. The same you also have to be okay with going the negatives in this one too. So mm -hmm. loans are a big thing in this game, as they are in many Martin Wallace kind of designs. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to be okay with taking out loans and being in the negatives before you start turning it's, a profit. It's one of to, to me. I mean, what's Martin done about hundred plus games? More. Yeah. It's one of his best okay. game designs. And I haven't played Age of Steam yet, so maybe that'll... that'll Spoilers, it's my well. favorite of his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I I think it's great. Uh, but actually, I also think uh, Brass Lancashire, like the original Brass, is, is a solid entry point into the idea. It's a little bit less complex. It is a little less complex. So I can see why that's not in yeah. your top 20, because I know the type That's of not why. You enjoy, but I know the type of game you enjoy. Yeah. So to me, Lancashire doesn't give you as much game. Oh, that's not why. Okay. Honestly, the reason why I don't like Lancashire as much as Birmingham is that whole handshake market off board where you don't necessarily know how far it's going to go down. And then at a certain point, it's, wonky. it's just worthless. It is wonky. Because it's Martin Wallace. It, but that's the yeah. thing. This took out the <laughs> yeah. wonk and put yeah. the wonk in the yeah. right place. Okay. That's why I okay. like Brass Birmingham. If look, it could have been as simple as a, like El Grande. I love, and that's super yeah. simple. Yeah, you know, um, Crocodile is phenomenal and super simple. But Brass Birmingham has the wonk in the right place. Yeah, yeah and Brian, Brian hit on like what, what Barra said, and I'm, yeah. I'm saying that you know the, the first great the first half or the first couple of turns are really oh, difficult. That's, there, there we are. Um, but play it squirrel. Yeah, yeah. I felt hard. Yeah. Line too. And then and I and like I said. I Brian to group me here. I do think the right teacher for this one's important because otherwise that second half, because there's a good chance the first time you play this, you are going to lose. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that's necessarily going to be the case, but if you play with someone who knows this game, yeah, I think the odds are very much not in your favor that you're going to win. So that teach needs really about, okay, here's how you play the game. So the next time it becomes a competitive yeah. game. That. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, you. The, the game really shines in your second and third place, uh, yeah, and subsequent place. Yep. But yeah, good choice, good solid choice. My so, number two, for a while, was number one. That's Gloomhaven. All right. Designed by Isaac Childress. Uh, I have one picture. You can zoom out if you want to. Um, in this game, because you can see more stuff, uh, is a cooperative dungeon crawler, but not really too much heavy as a dungeon crawler. What I love about Gloomhaven is it gives me that Mage Knight kind of feel, but doesn't give me the AP of the Mage Knight feel because I have specific cards. I'm only playing two cards a turn, and I have to be completely flexible with both cards because depending on what the initiative order is, depending on what people are doing, I always need to be constantly shifting my strategies, and it's, it does that in a co-op fashion. And this is my favorite co-op game, period, um, because of how solid the level design is in Gloomhaven. The system is very good. It ha And it is rough when you're first playing Gloomhaven. There's a lot of looking in the rulebook and kind of 
going over things. Um, but there's no question for me, my favorite part of Gloomhaven is the level design. And there are, I believe, 101 different scenarios in the original Gloomhaven game and how they take the core mechanics and, ex and expose it all over the place with the, with the level design. And not only that, the standalone scenarios, the, even some of the fan-made ones, mm -hmm. they do such an incredible job because I feel like those core mechanics are great. And the level, like how, how I get pulled into what the objective is going to be, how the structure of the board is going to be, and what bad guys are out. Amazing. I, I, I love everything about it. And, and you have the asymmetric powers, too. Everyone plays completely different. And you have that old advent calendar kind of uh, excitement of a legacy game where you get to unlock things. This is the closest thing to a video game on my list in board game form. And you you sold this mostly, right? Or do you play this with no, groups? Or no, no. Where, where have you played this most? I should say. Uh, two player, three player. Two player, three player. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It scale. It scales very well. It that's does scale. Well, that's in my... the sense that you can, if the three of us started a campaign and one of us couldn't make it, the game plays really well. Oh yeah, and that's oh, how yeah. you play and it. You can drop back in, and that's yeah. So I like the fact that it's it's modular in the sense that players are the moduality in the game that we can drop in and out. Right. Yeah, that, and that, that that's is really cool. That's impressive. And I've played, I have played it. I played the first two levels of this one, uh, and it was, I was impressed by the design of it. It, it ultimately left my collection because it just it was, didn't hit the table. Uh, and then, well, it's a chore to set up. It's a chore to set up. And then I knew you had it. So go, at that, that point, I was like, I don't need this. No. But it was one game that I will say I. I enjoyed the uniqueness of the characters and there was excitement that had I kept playing it of yeah. what am I going to unlock? What's going to happen? Yeah. And then that those ad adventures in between yeah. when you're able to go ahead and make some choices. Yeah. Honestly, I think, I think yeah. Well, it's it's like Christmas in a box when you open it because you know you've got those initial yeah. is it four or six, six characters initially, isn't it? Uh, it's six, six that you could choose yeah. from out of the 17. Yeah. But, then, but then there's another, yeah, there's another yeah. like 10 or 11 Because once, they're, once no they reach idea. a certain point, you have to retire. Yeah. Or yeah. once you choose to retire someone. I think once they get to level nine, they automatically retire, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, they don't automatically retire. You there's no automatic you can right? choose, Yeah, but you can choose to retire and open another box yeah. once they hit that ninth, yeah. ninth tier. Yeah. Is um, it? I gotta look that rule up. I so I <laughs> I was about half of the way through the campaign and then COVID hit. Oh man, yeah. And I haven't gone back to it. Yeah. And now I'm in this dilemma. Do I do I go back to the start? Because I, I love the uh campaign aspect. I think the narrative's very clever. Actually, I hate the narrative. Oh, the okay. Well, that's interesting, aren't we? Okay. I I, the, I think like going I think, the, uh, <laughs> the, the story is trash, in my opinion. I, and look, I love the okay. board game, but I do not play over okay. the story all right. at all. If I want something that is more, uh, it has more to more of an engaging narrative. Honestly, Vagrant Song, super solid. Okay, with that. all right. Yeah, Undaunted Stalingrad. I'm a big role player though. Are you a role player? No, not a role player. So maybe that, maybe that could be. To me, I like narrative yeah. in the game, but the the com the card combat mechanic is incredible. Yes, it is, and and that was yeah. what was really innovative: the idea of exhaustion. Yes. So the balance between discard and, and kind of... And you do a short rest or a long rest. Like, it's a matter of you are going to get hit. Do I short rest or a long rest? Is there an opportunity right now? And then That's also start... really clever. You know, and you also go into the game knowing that you have, what, between like 10 and 15 cards? 20 cards? Yeah, because yeah, you can only and, bring out and, a certain and number. And you can pretty much know all your cards going right into the start of the yeah. game for that session. That's what's really clever about it, that uh, it really reduced... Um, randomness, so yeah. to speak. And the AA mechanic's really clever. I, I think it's quite a solid AI about how yeah. monsters attack and who they attack. Now, I still haven't done Frosthaven. And by the way, when I talk my love about Gloomhaven, I also do include uh, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, which is the smaller yeah, box yeah. Gloomhaven. A it's welcome the, introduction. It's a fantastic Far thing. easier to get to the table. Far easier to get. just opening the book. And that's I love that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done Frosthaven. I've done we, the key. We, we were meant to start Frosthaven in January. We're I know. Now, we're now well, nearly in May. It's, you know, been busy. We need to, we do need to start. We, Brian and I talked about a Frosthaven we will. campaign. We talked about you getting in. We need to get, um, we need to get I did do Gloomhaven buttons and bugs, which Rachel did point out. I um, want to play, play this. It's solid. Right. Can, it's can solid. I, can I point out that Rachel did make a prediction? Sure. 
Uh, so earlier oh. in the chat, oh, don't go into prediction just yet. I'm gonna say earlier in the prediction, I will say squirrel. Maybe. Are we done with Gloomhaven? I'd say that you picked Gloomhaven, and this has drew my attention. That squirrel made a prediction, sure, and it drew my attention that he said he was between food chain, brass, and Gloomhaven. Mm -hmm. But I get a sense that Rachel's picking up on some of your tastes potentially mm -hmm. if this number one lines up. So based on your number one, we'll see. But Gloomhaven Rachel... might drop food chain magnets number one, brass at three. So that is Rachel's prediction. It's a fair prediction. Um, and Rachel just pointing out, by the way, that you've been playing, as you noted. And that's buttons uh, and bugs. Honestly, I don't think what really dropped it, to be perfectly honest, is I'm still excited about the game. And yeah. I do want to play it. But Honestly, when going between my number one and my number two, uh, I'm more excited about yeah, number one. the former, which my is number why it's one, number one. Which is why it's my number one. So, because it's not like last year I said for my birthday, let's play Gloomhaven. No. I said for my birthday, let's oh. play Food Chain Magnate, yes, which, was, which is my number one. Uh, so, yeah. And I have a picture of Giselle and I playing it years ago. This is before Maddie. Maddie was still in the womb at this point. Uh, Maddie's played it by proxy. Maddie's played it by proxy. He's the he's the only five year old kid. Oh yeah, to have played food chain magnet. Actually, I have a picture of him when he yeah. was like under one holding the little book. So, anyways, that. food chain magnet uh, is amazing. Uh, it is, it is what I love in a board game, oh so much. Where it's got wacky theme. Super snarky theme, incredibly yeah. snarky theme through the mechanics and the art design. I love when people are saying, Oh, I don't want to play Food Chain Magnet, it looks like prototype art. That's kind of the point. It's meant to be very snarky, it's meant to be very clip arty, you know. I love its take of it, I love its whole parody of people in this town are going to only want to eat what they are told to eat and they're going to only go to the restaurant that's closest cheapest and has exactly what they want or else they won't they won't eat and they'll just yeah, wait till the next just, day yeah. they'll just starve. Out. i yeah. love how hilarious yeah. that is um i love so much everything about this game how there's really only two cards in the original game that you can really start with or else you lost the game. I love that aspect of the game where if you make one wrong move, you have lost the entire game. But the best part about that is you know exactly what that wrong move is and you get ready for next time to not do that wrong move. I'm I'm playing an online game for right now. I made a wrong move. I put my restaurant not where it should be going and I have lost the game already on the second turn. But I'm still going to play it. It's a gamer's game. It's a gamer's no, game. It's a gamer's game. You're not going to get Anthony to ever play this. No, I again, think I, I think, think I think we'll try it. <laughs> Anthony will will try it. He did it. He will try it. He did oh, it he, was. wait, was he with us in the stream? He wasn't with us in that stream. I thought he was. Was Maybe he? Not. No. I, oh no, no, you're right. He no, wasn't. wasn't. No, you were. You only described it to Anthony. But no, this was interesting because the way you did, and and Ryan ran a teach of this, which we did. Yeah. On see, the he did not. Yeah. Okay. Did not. Okay. All right, I apologize. I'm mixing up. Who, who the heck did we play with? Um, this is Rob. It was and Rob. my friend and John the Hand. It was Rob and John the Hand. Yes, John okay. the Hand would never play again. No, John the Hand will never play again. That's who will never play. That's again. correct. Um, here's the interesting thing. You did the teach of this. We did it on the channel, and you played without what? What do you call the checklist? The milestones. The milestones. The milestones. To give. Well, I played without myself taking part of the milestones right the milestones were on the board so i thought the milestones were interesting i did want to bring that up i thought that was a neat way because you could accomplish those and the, it's essentially board game achievements yeah and you get different benefits mm -hmm. that break the rules if you hit a specific achievement. which was very helpful playing someone so i i find it interesting what it looks like i would love to i almost want to be the fly on the wall as you're playing other people who know how to play this game because it, it would be we, fascinating. We have not played this yet. No. And we need we need to. Oh yeah. Because I'm gonna kick, love of I'm gonna kick your ass in it. I got a feeling. Oh boy. I got I a don't feeling. Know. No, you're you pretty played, good. You've played this a lot more than me. I have. Um, 
But I, I'm also pretty bad at it. All right, you can kick my ass at this. And yes. then I'll, I'll counter with another spot again. That's fair. And I kick your ass at <laughs> That's fair. Spot. That's fair. But I, I am a big fan of uh, uh, Splatter in general. Yeah. I love the idea that this company started off in a garage. And that's how they made the games, and that's why they were so limited yeah. when they first came out. And then they've expanded. I love the tightness and the unforgivingness in yeah. all of their games yes. because all of the games are the same. Um, well, same in the feel. In the, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Oh, their games in the aesthetic. Are like they're very yeah. different games, but, <laughs> but yeah, they the all they, they're all yeah. one or two mistakes. Like the yeah, original the game, the original, the original like bus, yeah. of bus, but yes. bus is, a good score in bus is like six points. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love that. I actually, yeah. I love that idea. But I love the fact that these are true games in the sense of they reward multiple, multiple plays. Yeah. Yeah. And and no matter how many times you have played this, I think you constantly keep running. Oh yeah. And you if you play Food Chain Magnet with people who've got 50 games under their belt, it's it's fantastic. Oh, it is. It's, it's the group of three. Of and that's the players. best because yeah. then that's my favorite part. Yeah. Because obviously there's the opening strategies. And there are opening strategies, and it's the only game I've actually read opening strategies. I on. have on BGG as yeah. well. This yeah. is still, you want to be a food so chain magnet? Not kick my all right, all right, I've read all right, the same articles. All right, all right, yeah. all right. Yeah. So we'll play on new milestones then, yeah, which um, changes the game completely. So going back to it, um, with food chain magnet, uh, when you play with experienced players, the game becomes less strategic and more tactical. Obviously, there's a lot mm. of strategy going on. But you need to be ready to change everything you're doing on the, uh, you know, like oh like immediately because if if you don't, as soon as you don't, one player but will. But it's hard to pivot. It's as well. extremely yeah, hard to pivot. So that's what's interesting. It's about extremely the game. hard to pivot. But oh man, if you pull it off, it, what it, I find it's with great. experienced players is that you do get wacky scoring at the end. You yes, get a, a lot higher spread. Yeah, a bigger spread because people are pivoting and and pivoting destroys the strategy yeah. you started with. But you're hoping that you're forcing other people to pivot and renege right. from those. Strategies. And I love getting that's, obliterated that's in this game kind of because I get I love get I love seeing someone run with the ball and seeing how how they've exploded this game, and it gives you these tools to explode the game in such a what was that? How ridiculous! Really, you got that much money? Or yeah, you got that much money? That's game over. Like I love that aspect of this game. Uh, where I get that feeling, yeah, it's, it's a, it's yeah. I mean, I'm we're almost like speechless. It's a it's a great game, the greatest, yeah, the greatest of games. I have to say, you're I'm, I'm your top five. Yeah, I think, I think are fantastic choices. Ah, the Gricola, Crokinole, Brass Birmingham, Blue Maiden, and Food Chain. Um, but what I like about your top five in particular is the different styles of game and the different mechanics in them. I think you zoomed out a little too much. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah my eyesight's not that good. Maybe a couple of years ago I could read that. <laughs> so that's the full top 20. But when I, when I think about, yeah, you've got some great diversity in your top 20, but your top five, you've got a quasi... Uh, so we got, we'll start with Food Chain Magnet, this incredibly tight, unforgiving game, which looks awful. Sure. But <laughs> that's the appeal yeah. of the game. Then you've got Gloomhaven, this quasi role-playing dungeon crawler board game. Cooperative, too. The best cooperative, cooperative one game. One of the most innovative combat mechanics ever. Brass Birmingham, semi-wonky. It's like one of the best kind of games of its genre out there. Crokinole, completely different. Is it even a board game? It is. And then Agricola, <laughs> one of the games that started off the rejuvenation of board gaming. What's fascinating. You think so? Yeah, I modern yeah. board gaming, I think so, because... What was Agricola? 80... 2007? 2007. So you had, uh, in the 90s, yeah. you had Catan. Sure. And I think you had Agricola that then really um, launched worker placement back again. Or, now, or, or the a, thing or is this. This is my top right? 20. Um, but I still love plenty of other board games that are not in this top 20. And I would be advocates of so many different board games. Um, but, yeah. What's almost a shame is... is that games like Agricola, El Grande... They've been out so long that they're hard to get to the table now with a big game. We, we all have a lot of games between us. Yeah. And these games are classic and mainstays. Yet I'm seven years out of playing Agricola. Gloomhaven, I'm three years, three and a half, four years. Honestly, out of though, a lot of my love for these games too come from repeat plays online. Okay. But to be fair, right. I do. I, I mean, I'm still I'm in plenty of games of Agricola right now. I'm in games of Food Chain Magnet. I'm in games of Brass Birmingham. 
you know? I need, games to, switch, of heat, I need to switch my patchwork. job to have all this gaming. No, and I async, think awesome. async. No, but async. I think that's awesome that you that you can well, you can do that now. Yeah. We can play async. I think that's really cool. I, yeah. I think th- we've come to a point where the physical, though, the physical playing of the game is still so incredibly meaningful, almost more meaningful, because we went through a period of yeah, time where definitely. we were only doing it online. Yeah. So... Uh, when it comes down to it, even if you haven't played El Grande or Agricola in a while, you can still appreciate just what that game is. Oh, I about. want it now after talking about them again. I really want to play El Grande this year. I have, we have to play that. Yeah. Because I've never experienced it. Yeah. But yeah. now I really want to play Agricola again. You could. After we talked about it. Yeah. Because now I'm, I'm thinking back through how fun it was and how much I enjoyed the play. Um, but that is your top 20 ryan now i believe next week you're gonna be you'll be in next week's video but it will not be your list yeah so danielle danny Chow will be having her top 20 yes next week and danny's done uh, danielle's done so much uh it helped for us on the back end a lot of feedback that's been really pivotal for the channel and, and has a great channel and she had a fantastic own. top 20 last year yeah uh and but so- this one's gonna blow it away I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's on her list this year. I am not privy to that list, so I have no clue. Uh, and then we're going to be coming back the week after, just so people know, with a double dip. Uh, and there's other games that could swap into here, too, because that schedule's evolving. But on April 30th, we're going to have Mr. Rao. That's right. And we're going to have a crossover event. Uh, which is this one? It's okay to cross the streams, right? Yeah, yeah. We okay. cross, literally, we cross the streams for okay. this one. We're literally crossing the streams. And then uh, when it comes down to it, the next night, I am inviting Mr. Rao right back. And he's going to be hanging out uh, to talk about my top 20. Oh, goodness gracious. So, cool. so we're going to have some fun and a lot more than that. But those are the ones just so you all know in advance. And uh, yeah, Daniel will be live. Yes. So we're very excited. So come join us live for that next Wednesday. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Oh, I'll try to tune in for that. Sorry yeah. That. But until then. Until then, I'm going to say thank you for coming aboard <laughs> the Tabletop Express. And uh, if you have any questions about the show, enjoy the show, drop them in the chat. But in the meantime, we're going to say thank you for coming aboard. And- Good night.